So we have Celeste Ayres and Wes Rawlings with us today. Celeste, uh, they're both with Gallo Wines. So Celeste is the Senior Manager Operations L&D and is responsible for the training and development of professionals in the operations and supply chain management roles. And Wes is leads the operations training for both the winery seller and the bottling room. Now, the title of our webinar today is Job Instruction is Pulling in Job Relations at Gallo Wines. But before we get too far into that, Wes and Celeste, Linda mm -hmm. Smith from Romeo Rim has put in a question and she said, can this webinar relate to a, uh, can this webinar relate to a reaction injection molding manufacturing company? So let's right off the bat answer that question, please. Short answer, yes. Um, the concepts relate to what we're gonna be talking about, which is our journey with JI and then adding in job relations. If you have processes or manufacturing processes and humans that do that, this applies directly. Yeah, I, th I think that's the key, isn't it? If you have humans involved, and um, even the most automated industries that go at some point will have humans involved. But if you have humans involved, yes, it it, it applies. Yeah. Well done. So in the uh, thank you in the webinar we did in July twenty sixth. Uh, it ended by Sean Volland, who's with the Institute, saying practicing job instruction is giving rise, I'm just looking at my left, to people things that need to be handled. Job relation skills are being pulled in to our work with job instruction. So given that description, what have some of the people things that Sean uh, what are some of the people things that Sean referred to? Oh, it could be a whole host of people things. In the training space, you know, what West are the, has what's some of the main ones. Main one, main ones. So we have learner hesitation. Obviously, job relation could be in there, a new process. What would you think as well? Um, I think a lot of the people, the, the people's things that I see is, I think, leadership skills when it comes to mm -hmm. supporting their employees um, throughout the, you know, throughout that learning cycle yep. um, and continuing that support once you know, people are kind of set loose to do what they've been trained to do and do what they're supposed to be doing. Um, that support has to continue and those relationships have to continue. Um, so I think we've seen a lot of that. Uh, you know, I, I think we've seen JI kind of pull in JR in those areas where, mm -hmm. um, you know, we spend a lot of, a lot of focus time in the training department, getting people skilled up and getting them, you know, the necessary support and the skills that they need. Um, to get them out there to do their job. Um, but then that can't disappear. That support um, can't go away. So then we've really seen the need for for some of those JR principles to remain on the floor with their supervisors and above. So um, I think that's a key that's a key point there for how they they play together. <clears throat> Another one, even in my space, uh, so just understanding the division of labor a little bit, it was supporting training operations in Modesto bottling and seller, and I am over Modesto bottling seller spirits in South Carolina. So I'm dealing with like the executive leadership level, I guess you say. And I use JR in that space when working through complicated uh, staffing changes or even training skills conversations. So even though it's not JI related, actually our relationship and how we've been pushing JI through and, and developing that in our operations world has had very fruitful conversations with leaders. I am now using JR skills yeah, right. to manage those conversations instead of letting chaos ensue in those conversations because it's pain. Uh, <clears throat> so it's helping avoiding chaos. Can you give us an example of something recently when that's when that's mm -hmm. um, when that's happened? Well, I think we're chaos prone, right? Would you say we're we're, it's we're kind of our standard chaos, chaos prone? Um, <laughs> but it, a lot of it had to do with. Well, I can't speak to specifics to our business, but I can speak to uh, anytime we've had uh, no, corporate initiative, uh, corporate initiatives come down saying, "Hey, we need obviously like a flexible workforce." Okay, well, that's a training impact. That definitely is going where our method of training is going to be JI wherever possible. Now let's talk about the human side of that change and that change management element and what are the potential paths we can do we take with that. JR is a good example of how we've used that to navigate those conversations and all the abundance of options 
And what's unique about JR is that ability to go back and go, what facts have led us to this possible conclusion? And yes. the principles on the once I didn't bring my card with me, but the, the facts of the card that says, maybe if we tell people ahead of time, we won't have this problem. That has been a big benefit for me going into conversations. Like we can avoid a lot of these concerns if we just do these four things. So framing it that way like, and having uh, a structure. And in terms of, right. yeah, that's right. It's almost structure to change management, isn't it? It's giving some, um, yeah, it gives some structure to change management, particularly that tell people in advance about a change it's going to affect them. So when you've done that, you know, pull, it says uh, tell them why if possible. So how did you handle that aspect? What was the why behind, from the, uh, you know, the, the the need to bring in JI and, you know, there's some background there. What was the what was the why behind that? And how did you communicate that to, the, to help people accept the change? So... Our journey, as you some some are new here, our journey doesn't was not yeah, we yeah, did go JR back to a first, little bit on that journey. And then no. we didn't do JR before JI. Would we do that? In retro, I think that's been something we have debated multiple, multiple times. I see absolute benefit in going in reverse, doing the human side first. Like how do you interact with humans? How do you have conversations that are grounded in those principles before you want to implement a change like JI? However, We've been successful in reverse. We're playing catch up now. And so our journey was JI first because we had an absolute need to skill up a lot of people very, very fast in the middle of a pandemic. And we saw that it worked and we're going to keep going that way. The challenges we've had since, we've had a lot of changes, changeover in our leadership, uh, frontline leadership, that is. We've had uh, continued challenges as far as growth and development of our business that all impact humans. So we educated ourselves last time at the summit on JR and we challenged ourselves as an organization to put into play and then start engaging leadership to uh, accept those processes. Did I leave anything out? Yeah, so what? No, 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 I think you did it. Yeah. <clears throat> so what I understand you're saying is there was a compelling need for JI. You didn't have time for JR back in 2020 or 21 or 2020. Well, so there was that yeah. compelling need, didn't have time for JR. So you got on with JI, fair enough, completely fair enough. What that brought to the surface, and I think that Sean was alluding to, was these JR issue or people, uh, the human side, the human side, mm -hmm. as you say. So now there's an opportunity. And then you picked up at the summit, uh, you know, you know, and through other stuff you guys have done and the association with the Institute about the, the uh, potential for JR and now you're, it's now you're, in your words, playing catch up as such. That's right. We're scaling up. So I don't know how many people on the call hear this. Something happens on the shop floor or in the work world and the performance isn't what you were expecting. So let's go retrain that person. Yes. That is the, the, I don't know how many times, if we had a dollar for every time we were told this happened, we need to go train this person, retrain this person. Uh, we would be able to retire because it happens so frequently. So that's where that compelling need for JR came in. It's like, wait a minute, this is not, we know we trained according to this standard using a verified method that works. And we demonstrated that skill at the end. What has happened since that? And we realized the conversations that should be happening weren't and as a we were the band-aid and so for us to stop interceding we need to be able to give the skills to the leaders to be able to have conversations with their team members and that's performance management conversations as well as just knowing their team members like a better term yeah you know it's so it's something we talk about quite a bit at the institute i think what i've picked up um is that JI is a countermeasure to the problem of don't know, can't do. Um, if someone can do, does know and can do, but isn't, then there's no point in retraining because they right. know and they can. They're making a decision not to for whatever reason. That's a leadership function. That's a leadership. Right. That's The countermeasure to that is leadership. I think that's what you're pulling out yeah. of this. Yeah. Yep, exactly. I actually said to a manager once, I said, that's the definition of insanity. You want me to retrain them, 
in the exact same way I did before, because that's what I'm going to do, but you're going yes. to expect a different result. Yes, yes, yes. So if we already aligned that the training worked the first time and they demonstrated that and they, they performed at that and something's changed since, retraining them is a waste of time and resources at this yes. juncture. Now, now, in if you go through the JR process and you do determine that there is a skill gap, then let's have a conversation. Sure, but sure. it's not a jump to conclusion, performance bad train, because yeah. that ties up our resources. So as the ops manager, the training operations manager, making sure that our team is functioning, both, both, both of us operate in this space. I don't want my resources tied up in rework, essentially. Yeah, re retraining someone who does know can do. There's not much point in that. No point. Um, so the, the conversations that should be happening that weren't, were they, where was, where was that gap mostly? Was it right at the frontline leader level? Was it the supervisor? Was it the level above? Or where was that? Uh, I, I think we've, I think we've seen it in all the, all the, in all the, the layers of, uh, of where we are. Um, and I think one of the, you know, one of the, kind of go back to your question, if we, could have done JR first, you know, would we, I, I don't know, I, since we do JI and, and I like the success we're having, I say, I'd like doing JI first. And she says, I like doing JR first. So it's probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think no right in, a perfect, right. in a perfect world, if we could have done them both together and build as we, as we went, that could have, that was the, that would have been great. We didn't have the ability to do that. So we, we went with JI. No, no, no. And if, in one of the conversations we've had with, um, with, you know, some of the other leaders in the area who, you know, are a little, maybe a little more in tune with their, their world, um, have said, Hey, we've seen you guys take such a, such a big leap in the work that you're doing with training and you're now providing such a high quality training. It's, it's really showing this gap between our leadership skills and your training skills, because we're not moving them up at the same pace. You guys are really taking off. So that's really one of those areas that it's, yeah it's highlighted why we need to build those JR skills along with the JI skills in the training department, because it's, you can't really move forward with, with just one. So, I mean, you can, but it's painful. It, it you know, it, it does create those gaps. So that was kind of an interesting conversations we actually had with some of our leadership who are now asking for the help mm -hmm. to build those those leadership skills within their their team, which is great. So that's kind of that pull that we've uh, you know been talking about a little bit with the you know with JI and how it's how it's asking for JR now. So right, because okay. JR is an interesting okay. space. You know, JI that's in our wheelhouse. That's how you train. We have autonomy yes. to go make that change. JR is across the org now. Little secret in our space, we but actually what line across in what, sorry? across the whole org, across what, the organization. Sorry? So yes, 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 yes. little secret about us, we're actually in the HR department. We don't publicize that a whole lot amongst our team members on the floor because we're fun HR, not the discipline HR. But we, um, because we're in that space, we do, we are privy to some of these conversations that are challenges in our leadership organization. And the question I mean, we've had this conversation like what do you do like do we just tell hr like we will be holding a jr class you will be sending your leaders to this that is in our culture that is not the right thing to do so we're we've been waiting for this crisis to happen we've been waiting uh, for the crisis the existential crisis of leadership to happen it's happening we feel it we've had some changes in leadership all good we're waiting for that crisis so we can strike yeah, with right. the answer but we've been playing it we've been doing it we've been practicing it and they yeah, see the yeah, benefits right. of it so it's a unique way to infiltrate we've even used a um, couple of oh go, go on go on he's go on Wes. So he glitched a little bit sorry say that again he wants you to go ahead yeah keep going Wes. keep going oh sorry yeah real quick so again we're you know we kind of see the the jr needs at all the all the levels, um, you know, Celeste works through issues at, at her level with the, you know, the certain groups, um, kind of the executive level. And then, you know, within our own group, we're using the JR principles. Um, but there's only a very select few of our team who have actually gone through the, the course. Um, 
myself and Rudy, we even use it down all the way to our all the way to our actual JI trainers. We we don't have the ability to put all of them through the course. They don't report to us. They report to ops. Um, but we do talk through the principles of JR with them. Mm -hmm. We have them up on the boards. We yeah, talk right. through here's here's the things to do. Um, so when they actually go out to the floor, they're actually following those principles with their trainees. So they're actually showing, yeah. you know, they're showing the trainees, they're showing the leaders um, these principles within their their actions. So we're we're really right trying to, to start. kind of a little foundation of it. So when we do, you know, when we do hit crisis mode and we are ready to, you know, to really hammer down with Jr. We can say, hey, your, you know, your team members are already understanding these principles. They're already feeling it when they go through training, and then they feel an immediate drop off once the training department releases them to the, to the wild. But all we have to do is keep your, you know, keep your leaders, yeah, um, up to speed with these principles, and you know, make this kind of a seamless transition. And it's going to be really, really easy to implement this JR. So we're really trying to build you know, kind of a little secret foundation until we're really ready to get all of our leadership into it. So, right. Because I, my natural tendency, I, go ahead. Just say, I know I you're that's very, I think that's very, I think that's very clever what you're mm. doing. And it's a case of action speak louder than words. And if it's going to be, it's up to me. In other words, we'll okay. just quietly set the little example here as a group and uh, wait until people take notice. <laughs> well, and, for those that don't know, like my my natural inclination is to just do it, you know, and not wait for the HR folks and not wait for the conversation to be had uh, and and just just do it. Uh, and that really yes. is we are drivers of change. No problem with that. However, culturally speaking, the reason why we're taking this perspective is a little bit of emotional intelligence, a little cultural intelligence of our organization. We don't want to wait. We're not waiting. Our HR team knows, yeah, yeah. but we need to partner with them. It cannot be a training organization driven decision because then it becomes a training organization owns it. Yes. And it really is a cultural ownership. So just to clarify there, it isn't, um, this is a very calculated approach. So, and I say infiltrate, yeah, sure. I mean it. Makes sense. It, it is a word, it's an intentional. <clears throat> word. I think the other thing you're handling there is that uh, I often, Describe JI fits horizontally across the organization at the tends to fit horizontally at the frontline level, whereas JR transcends an organization. In other words, sits vertically. Um, okay. And I think that's a major difference between the two. And I think what, what I hear you doing is addressing that vertical thing and, and building up the timing, if you like, for when it can be genuinely done vertically, because that's when it's going to have the most impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it is absolutely it. I mean, I even think a JR is kind of falls in that prepare the worker space. Yeah, totally. Honestly, yeah, exactly. in the JR yeah. space. Yep, and that's that. That's really part of it. Yeah. yeah. And that, and when we say we're kind of waiting for for crisis mode, we we are, you know, but we're kind of always in crisis mode. But um, we're we're really waiting. When we say that, we're really waiting for the ability to get to the very top of our leadership and start yes. with JR there so it can cascade down to everybody else who needs it on the frontline floor. Yes. Um, but we know we can't start there and build up because it, it's, you know, it's climbing a wall that, you know, you might never get over. So um, at least it feels like we're getting close to that with all the leadership changes we've had recently. Yeah, um, so, you know, that's when we say we're kind of waiting for the, the crisis, um, you know, we're we're really waiting so we can get into the top yeah, and then cool. cascade down. That's really what where we're going to yeah. get the success from JR. Um, where JI we've kind of built from the bottom, we've built from the production floor, and we're starting to build that up. So, and because of that, this is an interesting spot. But I was discussing this with um, one of our new leader, new executive leaders into our bottling space, and I was talking to him. I said, you know, it was through JI that we legitimized our expertise in what we do in training and because of that now they're willing the leaders are willing to listen to us when we come to a solution with a solution of jr so we say look we've done this oh by the way this yeah, is the right. solution but they have to ask us we're a pool system so you have to ask us for this information so oftentimes they'll come to us and go we have this situation 
we have the situation. We need to deal with this situation. Yeah, right. Um, the, and the, the pool is happening. So it's good. And do they do they then ask you, you've come up with a response, if you like. Do they ever get to the point where they ask you, how did you come up with that? Or what was your thinking to come up with that? Has that happened yet? Not quite yet. No, they, they <laughs> currently, because the, the, the questions that do come to us, there are situations that do come to us are, I yeah. wouldn't say they're urgent, like they have to be solved that day, but they're usually complicated. They're coming to us as thought partners yeah, right. Fair and they're coming to us as yeah, right. potential solution providers. And then one of our HR managers specifically, she'll say to me, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say JR, aren't you? So I'm like, oh, I got to reword this a little bit differently because they're now starting to understand this. I got to make sure that they understand the principles that they just don't know the acronym. So it, sure. we've really been uh, trying to build that. That's a good segue. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that's a good segue into the question, a question from Matt Jackson. And he's written, as the plant training coordinator, I fall under the CI department and not HR. Would you mm -hmm. say that it's vital to have the HR department heavily involved in implementation of JR? Yes. <laughs> yes. If you know what I'm going to say now, Celeste, why? Why? I'm going to, I'm backing you up here. So why I say yes, if you're managing conversations with employees in one manner, and that's JR, but all your other investigations, your discipline conversations, your PAs or performance assessments are done in a different manner. Without those principles, we're not speaking the same language. This is a cultural yeah, exactly. shift. So, yes, it needs to be adjacent. Would you say? Yeah, it's a, you know, it kind of takes the, it takes a village and it's a cultural move to, you know, move to JR. It's not that you would be asking the HR department to throw out everything they're currently doing and, hey, we're switching all of it. It's not it's not that. Um, but it then becomes part of your, your actual language of your culture. This is how we are. This is how we treat people. And this is how we handle problems. And we do that throughout, you know, the entire organization. Um, and HR can help shape those conversations, especially as they help develop leaders and have coaching conversations and, um, you know, help with org design and all that stuff, you want them to be speaking the the language of JR as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Do you, um, in your experience so far, and you've got the yellow, the pocket card, as I understand it, and you haven't done the training, you're building towards that. In your experience, one of the things I've found is that the yellow card is almost to the detriment of JR as far as HR departments are concerned. I've got to be careful what I say here. But it almost, the view is it can't be that straightforward. Uh, perhaps it's not. Perhaps we overcomplicate things sometimes and JR is something that can yeah, get us going in this area. Now, we have, to clarify, we, we have gone through the JR course, both, both of us. Okay. and Some of your training people have. Yes. Just, just us, us, just myself, just, Celeste, yeah, and right. Rudy. Right. So. so I don't give that card to my friends in the room when I'm walking okay, through uh, the process. What I absolutely appreciate about appreciate about JR is the same thing I love about JI. It's this structure. You follow this thought process, and it hold you. You can hold me accountable to. I like to jump to conclusions. You know, I want to get to the yeah. solution and we go, no, let's follow this process and let's make sure those facts in step one that we know marry up with these potential solutions so we can actually make a decision. I love that about it. It doesn't hinder the process. It actually enhances that HR process. And I would leverage, leverage, and this is the conversation I'm having with a HR manager here now, that the number of investigations, the number of calls for help to the HR department would actually go down if they implemented JR. And I want to quantify that. So worthy test case. But it's, oh, you're, yeah, I see. Yeah, right. Yeah, and makes... imagine if you are doing the ER, the investigative side, as we call it here at Gallo, and you already had your thought process lined out and how you follow JR, imagine how much easier it would be for the investigative people the dark hr folks yeah, to be yeah, able right. to, to focus yeah, yeah good 
Um, just back on that JR or JI, we've only got a little bit left, and which do you do first? And you mentioned, Wes, the, poten the, the possibility of doing it in parallel. Mm -hmm. Do you think the people who it impacts most would have had the bandwidth to, like at the frontline level, would it have would they have had the bandwidth to get the head around um, uh, both the concept of JI and JR and, and the time to practice? At the end of the day, they both require practice. And I think that's what it comes back to sometimes. Do we have time to practice both? Sure. What are your thoughts? So I think for, at least for us, um, I can speak to kind of our scenario. Um, it's almost it's almost different groups doing, mm -hmm. you know, really, really practicing the different um, principles. So, you know, we've got our, our trainers who are operations, you know, they're operators or they're mechanics and they're working on the production floor. They're our actual trainers. So they're going through our JI course. They're going through lots and lots of practice, like you said, yeah, right. getting really, really good at the method um, and delivering the method. And within all of that, within kind of their trainer development course that we've that we've developed that we put together for all of our trainers, we're using the principles. They're feeling them. We're we're sharing them. Yeah. We may not put them through the actual JR course, um, yes. but they're using the principles. They're being, you know, not really taught necessarily the principles, but they again they feel it as we as we use the principles with them going through the course. Mm -hmm. Now, actual JR, they're, they're they're embedded in there. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, JR, that would be, that's for our leaders to really go through. Um, okay, right. They would be, they would be spending the time going through the JR course, practicing those, following their card, using that when problems come up, using the principles to avoid problems. So they, the, the leaders would be spending their time using JR. Sure. Um, and when I say spending their time, it, that just means Practicing. doing their job i mean it's not like uh yeah you know they don't need to go and add an extra two hours a day to to learn jr right um so they'd be following those principles um but they would know about ji mm -hmm. so sure. it's kind of the it's kind of the inverse right we would teach them about what ji is um without actually putting them through the course and saying now go practice ji because they're not so going to be I our see. actual trainers so they understand oh, the see. principles they understand what their employees are doing Yep. They understand what support their employees need, and then they use the JR principles to provide that support. While our JI trainers are spending their time practicing JI, understanding that they need to treat people a certain way, they're being treated a certain way, and they know that they have the support. So it's kind of the inverse for the two different yep. groups. Yeah. So what? we could have done them both together if we had the we had the buy-in from the leadership side to say, yes, we're you know we want to go learn these principles as you learn as you teach JI principles. We could have. Um, we And we could have pushed it more. It just wasn't, but, it wasn't in the cards at the time, so. But I also, this is, the, Oscar, this is like a, you know, having several bottles of wine discussion, uh, yes. debate, conversation. Like we yeah, had of course. this conversation. And there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right no, or wrong. But we have, we have, I don't know how many times we've been like, could we have done it di differently this way? What would have that, we've, this has been a healthy debate for three years. You've yeah, got to find exactly. what fits your. You got to find what fits your your landscape and your culture and your environment at the time. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, and I think what you're saying there, there's two different parts. You can help result. You can help be the countermeasure to the problem of don't know, can't do, but leadership need to be the need to, the the skill of the leaders need to be providing the countermeasure skill to does know, can do, but isn't doing. It's not something that falls under the training department, which is sort of what you're saying there. I think. Um, we're very close to the bottom of the hour. We're, in fact, we're right on it. Um, you guys are always extremely generous with your time and discussions like this, Celeste and Wes. Thank you very much. And Wes, we'll see you in two or three weeks at the summit. Yeah. We'll and you're you presenting with, uh, with one of your colleagues, uh, Rudy. And yep. we, I'm sure people, if you're uh, registered to attend the summit, they can grab you and pose uh, much deeper questions. Yep. And your experience is extremely yep, valuable. Yeah, please do. So, hope to see. Uh, hope you. to see lots of folks there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank so you, everybody. You, oh, yeah. Thanks, Oscar. Um, thank you to everybody who attended today. Again, just a quick reminder: you will receive a link directly from me within 24 to 48 hours that goes directly to the recording. Um, and as Oscar said, we will see.
most of you in just a few short weeks at this summit. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Apologies for my uh, reception.